Welcome to the last presentation uh, related to Chapter 2 on Fundamentals of Advanced Accounting Consolidation of Financial Information. Uh, we're looking at objective uh, number seven, um, to prepare the worksheet to consolidate the financial statements of the two companies. In our last presentation, we were looking at uh, you know, dissolution, if one of the companies dissolves and then we have one surviving company. Here, we're focusing on the two entities continue to exist. And then we are going to consolidate the financial statements uh, for um, when we are ready to issue our income statement, balance sheet, and all of the financial statements for third-party use. So in our previous example, we continue with Big Net, who acquires a small port on December 31st, so the last day of the year, uh, by issuing 26,000 shares uh, with a $10 part value per share, $100 fair market value per share. We have some fees associated with this acquisition. And there's also a, a contingency attached, which was discussed in our previous presentation. So the present value of that contingency is included in the acquisition price that Big Net is paying. Uh, for to acquire a small port. So the uh, total consideration transferred is 2,620,000. Uh, so we mentioned last in our last presentation that BigNet will have to uh, journalize the transaction uh, with a debit to the investment in small port companies. So that you might be confused as to why we are debiting uh, the investment in sub account. Yes, we are using the equity method. So Big Net is using the equity method to account for this investment. And it's also consolidating its financial statements. Okay, so Big Net is treating this as we are not consolidating. This is what we need to do in our financial records. Uh, but when we are consolidating in um, next slides, you'll see how we treat this on the worksheet. And then they're also going to have uh, whatever is associated with this purchase, which is the contingent uh, liability, uh, the issuance of the stock, a part value, and then the difference between the fair market value and per value of the stock. And then we also have an expense associated with the acquisition. So as stated, this is our worksheet. And so in our worksheet, it kind of lists everything sort of on a, a trial balance. Uh, we have big net, uh, and then we have a small port. So we're combining, we're consolidating their financial statements. Uh, note that Smallport has uh, nothing to report for revenues and expenses. Uh, the, the reason for that is because we purchased the entity on the last day of the year. So they have already closed all revenues and expenses to the ending retained earnings. Okay, but in future chapters, you'll see that we also have to consolidate the, um, the subsidiaries, revenues, and expenses. And then we have the consolidation entries, which deal with uh, sort of cleaning up the financial, the consolidated financial. So anything that we have in common that is being redundant, that Big Net is reporting on their record on their financial records and small port is also reporting uh, those will be eliminated to arrive our, our streamlined consolidated totals so as we mentioned before uh, we are going to have i think these um, asterisks indicate accounts that have changed from the uh, original figures that were provided uh, at the end of the year uh, the expenses have increased because we have that journal entry associated with the purchase, the professional fees. Uh, I think those were paid in cash, so that also affected our cash. 
And then uh, we had this uh, journal entry to debit investment in small port for the acquisition price, the consideration transferred. So we can see that in our balance sheet. And then we have um, the contingent liability. We have, uh, I guess our common stock has increased due to the issuance of the 26,000 shares and of course our additional paid in capital. So in essence, a small ports um, book balances for their assets and liabilities may have to be adjusted if the fair market value of those assets and liabilities differed on the date of acquisition, all right? And so we're gonna do that through a consolidation entry. At the same time, since BigNet purchased 100% of um, the assets and liabilities of Smallport, uh, the stock is no longer valid. It's part of BigNet and therefore this will have to also be cleaned up. And we do that through uh, consolidation entry S. So once again, we have the fair market values of small port. Oops, wrong one, I'm here. Fair market value of small port. Um, and so that means that the book values are currently showing on the balance sheet. So we need to kind of update those values to reflect fair market values. So here's our formula at play, the formula that we had in previous presentations. We have the acquisition price, and then we have, we end up with the difference. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the acquisition price. This is the net book value. And then we end up with an unexplained difference. This difference is allocated to uh, the undervalued assets and liabilities or overvalued. We didn't have any overvalued, but if it was overvalued, that would be the case as well. And so we are able to explain uh, 1,950,000 of the 2,020,000 difference. Uh, the unexplained difference goes to goodwill. Okay, so our step one will be to kind of reflect this on the consolidated financial statements. All right, so uh, we said before that we we're gonna have to eliminate the small ports equity because it's 100% owned by big net. Uh, so the um, equity section of a small port is composed of 100,000 of common stock. We have 20,000 of additional paid in capital and everything was closed to uh, ending retained earnings. So our ending retained earnings is 480. So in order to uh, zero out or eliminate the equity section of uh, small port. We have entry S, so S is for stock or stockholders equity. And so uh, the equity is a credit normal balance. So we're going to debit. So we're debiting common stock of small port of 100,000, APIC of small port of 20,000, ending retained earnings of 480,000. And then we credit this to the investment in small port account. So this is entry S. Now we have entry A and entry A, I guess you can say A stands for assets. Uh, we're actually going to, but it also includes liabilities as well. So we have to kind of reflect this goodwill on the consolidated financial statements. 
we need to increase, in this case, the value of the assets and liability to reflect the fair market value on the consolidated totals. So for that purpose, we have entry A. So the assets were undervalued, the liability was undervalued. So in order to increase that to the fair market value, we're debiting the assets and crediting the liability to increase it under consolidated totals. And then we're also recording the goodwill on our consolidated totals and we credit the net amount or the net total to investment in sub account. So if we look at our worksheet, we had initially our entry S, it was to eliminate small ports equity. Oh, sorry about that, I don't know what keeps doing that. So in this case, what we see the end result is going to be the same as big nets equity okay so i guess you could use that as your check figure so under consolidated totals i should have the same amounts reflected in equity as we do for the parent company okay and uh, we credit the six hundred thousand to the investment in small port account and then for small port assets, which uh, it had book values on their balance sheet, we had to increase those because they were undervalued at date of acquisition. Uh, and so we debit those differences uh, and also had included uh, goodwill here. And we credit uh, 2,020,000 to our investment in small port account. And so you can see that the investment in small port account has a zero balance. So this is another check figure, uh, your investment in sub account under consolidated totals should have a zero balance because we own 100% of this company. So this company is us, in other words, so we wouldn't have an investment in small port. And then the equity section of the balance sheet reflects the parent's equity section. Now, what happens if the company that's been acquired uh, has intangibles? Okay, it has intangibles. And so the uh, buyer, the purchasing company, is going to transfer those intangibles just like we did with the customer contracts uh, as long as it meets the uh, two criteria, which is uh, it has to be a contractual obligation. So it could be a franchise. In this case, was a customer contracts so that it met that criteria. And then we're going to include it in big nets um, or as it's going to remain in the consolidated financial statements or we're able to kind of separate it from the entire entity. So we have some examples of what are uh, contract based or they're able to separate from and therefore they meet the criteria and they will be uh, retain in the consolidated totals at fair market value on date of acquisition. However, if the acquiring comp if the acquired company uh, has any pre-existing goodwill from I don't know past purchases of uh, other entities, though that goodwill will be ignored. Okay, so we're basically not going to transfer this all goodwill into the uh, consolidated totals. Okay, this will be ignored. In terms of in-process research and development, it will be measured at the uh, fair market value on the date of acquisition, uh, tested for impairment, and therefore it will be also included in the consolidation totals. And this concludes our presentation.